Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the G object library which is part of the glib uh, system uh, which is um, used for creating GTK applications. So in this video we just want to make a very simple class uh, an instantiate a class object uh, using the G object library. So let's get started. I already have some um, uh, include paths defined for my IDE so that it recognizes uh, the G object library and where to find it. So let's go ahead and uh, first start by creating our uh, Mason build file right here. That's going to help us uh, with the building uh, of the application. So what we want to do here is uh, just very simply define our project, which is going to be an example project using the C. Uh, language. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and define the sources and the dependencies that are needed for the project. So uh, the way we do this is by um, specifying the executable, giving it, giving it a name again, and um, then we give it an array of the source files here. Um, we're going to have the, um, well, we're basically ha gonna have two source files. We're gonna have the main one, and we're gonna have the um, example person .c. We're gonna create these files in a, just a second, and uh, then we also need to specify the dependencies. And in our case, we are only going to have one dependency, which is gonna be the G object library. You do need to have this installed on your system uh, for this to work. So let's go ahead and create our main and um, example person C file, as well as the example person header file. And uh, we can already start uh, defining the class uh, using the G object library. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually import or include the glib object library, the header file for it. And um, so the way that the G object library works is it sort of um, adds object oriented programming uh, features to the C language. And the way it does this is by um, providing a, a set of um, very useful macros that expand to define a bunch of functionality that we would other, otherwise have to write by hand. So the first thing that we need to do is define our type. So the way we do this is by um, defining an example person type and uh, that's going to expand to example person get type which is a function that the um, declare final type macro is going to define for us. So let's go ahead and uh, declare the uh, or um, implement the macro to actually define our type. Um, first thing we're going to need to give it is the module object name or the uh, the name of the structure which is going to be example person. Oh, if I can spell correctly. Uh, the next thing it asks for is the module object name or uh, the prefix of all the functions that you're going to implement. Um, in our case, it's going to be example person. Then the um, the module or the the class um, the namespace is uh, example. We kind of want to namespace all of our functions in C. And uh, then the uh, the class name itself. And uh, the parent is going to be the G object. Um, once we've done that, um, there is one more function that we uh, need to declare manually, and that is the new or the constructor function um, to actually um, create the class. So that's going to be example person uh, new. Um, and that's about it. That's actually, oh, I, I'm sorry, I wrote that in 
the whole thing in the C file that's supposed to go in the header file. So that's actually all we need uh, in order to create a very simple class using the gobject library. Now all we need to do is go and implement it in the um, in the C file. So the first thing that we that we're gonna do is we're gonna include our header file. Um, the next thing that we need to do is define the struct uh, for the class itself. So this is um, one thing that the the macro doesn't give us uh, because it doesn't know. Um, all of the different properties that we're going to have in our struct. So um, let's go ahead and define our struct. Um, the reason for the underscore is because the macro actually type defs the underscore version um, to example person. So it looks something like type type def and then the underscore to uh, without the underscore. And that's why we need to actually have the underscore here. Um, so the first thing, um, the first kind of um, the property of our um, struct is going to be the parent instance itself. So in our case, that's the G object. And uh, um, this is not a pointer. This is uh, actually the the object itself. Um, the way that um, C works and the way that uh, you can actually achieve inheritance in C is if you kind of put the um, parent instance as the first property, it actually sort of um, like copies all of the um, properties of the parent object or the parent struct uh, into this object. And uh, that way you can actually get access to um, all the properties without having to go through um, uh, another property, if that makes sense. All right, the next thing we can uh, do is define any extra properties that we want, just like you would uh, on a normal class. So let's go ahead and define a name. So we're gonna we're gonna use the um, the GTK or the um, um, What's this called? Um, glib uh, variants of uh, the variables. These are purely for cosmetic cosmetic purposes. Uh, G char star is exactly the same as uh, char star, but uh, just to um, have a unified system, they uh, gave names to uh, I think all of the basic uh, data types in C. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is we actually need to define the uh, class itself. So we can do this by um, using the define type macro again and give it the the name of the class, the sort of the prefix for all our functions, and uh, the type is going to be g type object. So there are two um, functions that you have to implement. Um, uh, one of the functions is uh, a class init function, and the other one is the init function itself. So let's go ahead and implement the um, class init function. Um, the example person class. Um, as well as the definition for the function also comes from the macro. Um, the class in a function is going to be um, sort of like uh, for all of the instances of your object, whereas the in a function is going to be um, a lot uh, where you're going to put the logic for your specific instance. So here's um, in the init function, we can actually uh, perform any kind of um, setup work, any kind of initialization that we want. For example, we can uh, go ahead and set the name to an initial uh, value. So 
I'm gonna again use the um, um oh I keep forgetting the name uh of the library um glib so we can actually initialize any and we, we can do any kind of work we want here um, and then the last um, kind of uh, important piece uh, the last important function that we need to implement is the constructor or the new function to actually create the, um, the the object itself, so let's go ahead and create that. So once we've done this. Um, that's actually all that we need here. Um, it's not happy about this. It says it's undefined example type person is undefined. Oh, that's interesting. Did I not define this? Or did I not include example person? Hold on. Oh, I have a typo here. What is the difference? Oh, I'm sorry. It's um Yeah. I have a typo here. It's supposed to be type person instead of um uh, the example person type. Okay. So that should yeah, the error goes away. <coughs> All right. So now that we have um the basic functionality for a simple class, we can go ahead and um uh, create an instance of the class so let's go ahead and import our include our header file I cannot type today include example person dot h okay so we can go ahead and now create a um, Example person object. Um, let's call it uh, John and example person new. So if we um, wanted to get the name of the person, we could simply uh, print the name. Print of the name of John is. Um, Example person. Oh, I not I didn't define the getters and setters for the name, did I? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's go ahead and define a getter for the name. So, uh, let's say uh, so example person get name example person self all right so we're just gonna go ahead and return the name and we also need to make sure it's declared in the header file all right good um there you go so if we did everything right, it should compile and um, work. So let's go ahead and uh, try that. All right, so far so good. Let's go ahead and compile it. And we do have an error. Uh, I did not include the Standard IO library. Let's go ahead and uh, try it again. That worked. Let's see if it worked. 
and there you go the we get the initial name here and um, so that's um, basically um, how you create a very simple uh, class using the G object library.